what is going on everybody um welcome in if you're watching on twitch uh twitter and hello to all the people on discord um today is going to be a session regarding the training page and the minty page using alpha sharks and to see if we can catch a live play um so yeah we're gonna do the same thing give it about five minutes to uh give people a chance to hop in and again if you guys have any questions don't be afraid to type it in chat um if you're on twitch uh they should pop up on screen and i should be able to highlight them as well um and for those who are in the discord in the ama chat i put a link um that you're able to uh click and you're able to go inside a queue for the live stream itself. And um, if you have a question to ask that you're looking to ask on the live stream, um, that is the link that you'd want to click. So <clears throat> okay, we'll give it about five minutes and we'll jump right into it.
welcome people chiming in from Twitter, Twitch, and Discord. Um, I'm going to be your host, Swarizy. Um, today we will be going over the uh, training page and the minting page for Alpha Sharks. Um, again, we're going to try to see if we can get a live play for an example um, on how to best utilize sharks as a whole. Uh, and going to see how we can go from there. If not, um, we will just take questions from um, everybody who's chiming in. Uh, again, don't be afraid to ask any questions. Uh, if you have a question, somebody probably has a very similar question as well. So um, with that being said, let's jump right into it. All right, um, here um, we have our top portion with our alpha sharks tool uh we have our trending tab and our minting tab personally i like to look at both now um because we do have uh two very similar layouts um at this point and both of them are showing two different types of transactions that are going on one is obviously telling us what's minting and um how those transactions are actually going through on the trending page, it's telling us what people are actually buying. Um, so it might seem the same, but these two, uh, they're on two separate pages for two different reasons, because again, there's two, it's two different types of demand that is actually happening at this point. Um, and right now we can see not a lot of mints that are kind of coming through right now. Um, notice we don't have lots of pending transactions or uh, lots of transactions in the meme pool. Um, notice when we go to trends, there's a lot more action going in, going on here. Um, we have a lot more transactions flowing through. Um, so we actually might have our live example here. Um, Cesorius hot mic. Uh, we do have a question already. Uh, peasy. Uh, what are some good signals to look for before buying in? Um, so that's kind of a perfect start off question. Um, it's exactly what we're kind of doing right now. Uh, the reason I went to both minting and training pages is because I want to see where people actually are. Are people in demand for uh, live mints? Are people wanting to... Um, again, is there more demand for people minting projects or is there more demand for people buying projects right now? Um, again, <clears throat> that metric is going to help us out tons because it's going to tell us pretty much where the buyers are. Um, and right now, um, we can pretty much see where all the buyers are kind of coming in. Um, we do have the most ETH volume traded in the last 15 minutes. Um, this is a nice little metric that we got added. Um, and definitely uh, one to check out because again, if we know where the volume's at, that's uh, where there's gonna be more volatility. And when there's more volatility, there's more potential range to be playing within, which that's what we're pretty much looking for. We're looking for moves that uh, can have a big impact when um, transacted on. So let's jump right into this. All right, so let's change this. So what I'm doing here is <clears throat> basically just changing out the, um, how I'm trying to view the actual chart itself. So initially it was on, I think it was like 12 hours. Um, again, if a chart <clears throat> hasn't traded on the time frame that you're kind of putting within, um, it'll just go back the farthest uh, the data has actually provided up to 3,000 transactions here. Um, so the uh, reason I was looking at it was because there was lots of transactions going on. I'm actually not seeing any or as many sales as I was seeing uh, when I clicked into it, which is not too shabby. We're getting some, but... Um, one of the main factors uh, to your question, PZ, is um, what you said, what are some good signals to look for before buying in? Um, and this is kind of how we usually break this down. Um, initially, 
when going into projects, uh, there's a few handful of things we like to look at. Um, one being supply and owner ratio. Um, again, this having this metric here <clears throat> and knowing if the supply to owner ratio is under 50 percent uh if that's under 50 percent that's something that we're going to want to be somewhat cautious about um because it gives more opportunity for people to hold uh more nfts and that's kind of what this bottom uh cell wall metric uh color configuration is kind of linked to um because again if uh supply owner ratio is under 50 percent it's more likely that they're holding more tokens than just one at that point. So uh, what that's kind of correlating to is thicker cell walls to kind of get through. So that's one of the main things we kind of look for. Um, how thin are our, how thin are the walls? Um, so meaning how many people hold, hold just one token or just two to four tokens, because that's relatively still thin. Um, in consideration when we're looking at five to nine and 10 plus token holders. Um, once we start seeing more blue and purple uh, at this point, that's something that's uh, gonna be a lot harder to push through if there's a lot more people with that many tokens. Um, so that's one of the main things I personally like to look for. Um, one of the other main metrics here is going to be NBCP. Uh, it's going to be next blue chip probability, and uh, it's going to be a metric that uh, basically shows us uh, what blue chip projects are getting into uh, the project that we're currently looking at, and gives us a mean uh, breakdown on um, a percentage of the probability of it being the next blue chip. Um, and seeing this number increase over time is definitely one to uh, kind of keep an eye on um, that seven to ten percent range is definitely something to, to look at um, for some swing potentials because as this pushes into seven to ten percent and if that can start pushing higher into like the 15 20 percent range then what that's telling us is that more blue chip projects are getting into this and not only that the audience that they're reaching is it's just putting more eyes onto the project at that point, meaning there's a higher probability for more traffic to come in. So definitely one of the main metrics to um, take a major look at at this point. Um, another one is going to be active listings. Um, this is a very solid metric that is going to be directly linked to this bottom chart here. Um, notice we have 197 listings and if we go down here uh, we have about 199 now uh, notice that change as well um, so those two are going to be directly correlated and it's also good to compare the active listings to the actual supply because if this is under 10 percent of the actual supply again that's kind of linking how thin our walls are because if there's only 195 available out of 3,000 that's pretty small percentage um, at that point meaning again we have some thinner walls to kind of get through and that's kind of the setup that we're looking for um, one of the other things uh, to look at is going to be the uh, I guess the momentum chart that we have down here um, since we do have kind of a live momentum ish play um, first of all, I'm seeing this kind of downward formation. Um, and one of the main things I do like to talk about is going to be volume. Uh, so let's put volume on here. And um, notice here, uh, I always talk about creating ranges uh, to play within. And we can see that we have this little triangle formation setting up from about 0.1 to our last high around here was about 0.2. So we're playing about within a 0.1 range and we're trading right in the smack middle of that, um, top, testing this top trend line. So one thing I want to see in order for us to see the price action, um, get this type of price action here, is going to be a combination of things. Uh, it's going to be the uh, 
deduction in listings because again we want supply to be thinner meaning if there's less supply that's actually active um that's going to be uh just think about it if there's a few gem sweeps that kind of happen in here um the amount of listings is going to uh go pretty much towards zero at that point um and ideally when you get more listings towards zero um price ideally rises at that point due to if the demand can keep coming in, which is going to be one of the major uh, things we're going to look at. Um, because here we can see the deduction in volume two, uh, which is directly correlated to the price. Um, what we need here is active listings to go down and our sales to keep rising and our sales to, I mean, our listings to uh, go down as well. So I think that those are a few uh, indicators to check out. Um, let me see the chat real quick. Robert Johnny, is there a good way to spot a fake mint when a project launches, for example? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I usually try to stay away from that. Um, I highly advise using a burner wallet if you don't have one already. Um, I'm not 100% on that. Um, sorry about that, Rabbit Johnny. Uh, Hutch, how would we, uh, how do we know when is best to buy or how to call the bottoms to get the best prices? That's a great question. Um, one of the things I like to uh, break down is <clears throat> um, creating ranges. So notice we're talking about the the bottom of the range here, that point one, and then we're talking about this point two range here. Um, so range is basically just a top and a bottom, and where we're sitting at uh, in between that is going to uh, let us know uh, who's in charge. So um, here, I see this pattern that a lot that kind of has has this pump up, uh, retrace, and depending how far this retrace actually is, um, as long as this retrace here, this pump up and the retrace, as long as this retrace isn't below this last low, this is a bullish setup at this point. Again, um, it's going to help us tons if our listings can help uh, set us up at this point as well. Notice here the time the time frame 1030 1030 to 11 o'clock. Look what look at what happened to listings at this point. And now let's correlate that with um, the price action. 1030 to 11. That's this whole portion right here. 10.30 to 11. And again, look at what our listings uh, are doing right here. This is a, ooh, what happened to my, there you go. Um, yeah, so notice what's happening once our listings start to rise here. We literally get a peak of listings rising and <coughs> our, uh, we don't have the sale data here, but um, I can promise you that our sales actually started to decrease because notice our volume here as well starts to decrease at this peak. That's about 1035 around that zone. And notice we're actually breaking trend on listings here as well. And that's why we start getting this actual pullback. And again, how to kind of spot the retrace is on this pattern here. Definitely one thing to uh, look at is, again, what were we talking about earlier? Getting the listings to go down. And notice at 11 o'clock, what happened to our listings and what happened with our price action at that point? We actually got deduction in listings and a increase in volume. That's going to be key. But look at where we bounced. We happened to bounce right at that point once listings started to decrease. So it's a very key factor um, because again, notice we didn't break under our last low, which was 0.1. Um, 
So ideally, as long as that point one doesn't get broken, that's a bullish setup at this point, as long as we have the demand to follow this up. If nobody's buying and listings are still going down, this price action still would be retracing at this point because there's no demand coming in. Um, you kind of need accumulation of factors to uh, kind of get it all to work out. Hope that uh, helped out. Uh, then Joe, uh, I think that's kind of what I answered, how to spot the retrace, kind of looking at the listings, looking at the volume that's coming in and trying to pretty much see how the pattern's kind of forming and seeing who's in charge. Um, because at this point uh, right here, bulls are still in charge because they're, pay they're still paying a premium from what they were uh, paying earlier in the day. I mean, it was only an hour ago, but they're still paying a premium. I mean, 0 0.1, 0 0.02 maybe premium, but that's 20% of what these people were getting in at. So uh, definitely something to keep an eye on. Um, Oreo. When it comes to gas setting during high volume plays, what do you recommend using? Hard to get in and don't want to overpay. Um... That's another great question. I guess I'm killing it with questions today. Uh, one thing to check out if you have a momentum play uh, and you don't know how to kind of formulate your gas, this new feature that uh, we've actually implemented uh, on this sidebar under the trends tab under live sales, you're going to have three symbols here. You're going to have a gas pump, a flame and a, an uh, ETH, uh, total ETH emoji. And what these are going to break down is the gas pump is going to show you the range, the gas range that people are using within the project. So again, if you don't know which uh, or how much gas to actually utilize, this is pretty much telling you what people are using. So. Um, not only that, but if you go into the actual transaction, um, let's see. If you go into the actual transaction, um, you can see, oops, you can see what people are using. Their priority is 2.5 and their gas fee is 69.58. Um, you can see other people are trying to outgas them right here as well. Um, so that's fully dependent on uh, the project itself, um, but I'd utilize um, checking the gas range and then right next to it's going to be the flame emoji, which is going to be the uh, priority range that people are utilizing for the project. Um, definitely want to keep a look at and you're going to have total ETH. Um, on the right hand side so you have pending transactions and then you have the total number of people that are making the transactions um, so pretty neat little metric that uh, should be utilized if you're trying to see uh, the gas settings for that particular project uh, mofo how do I make uh, my chart look green and red oh so you're going to go straight into the project and instead of defaults going to be uh, by ranks, you'd want to change it to by PL. And what this is going to show you is every green uh, transaction is a sale that was made inside profit. Not every red sale is uh, sales that were at a deficit. So yeah, that's how you're gonna do that. Nebo, what are what is the red slash green outline at the left side of each listing? What does it indicate? Ooh, solid question. Um, so I believe you're talking about this left hand portion here. Um, let me pull my note real quick. Um, so you're going to have four different colors on the left side, um, and what those are going to indicate, you're going to have one main one, which is going to be uh, the green, 
and green is going to indicate a listing that has been listed for the first time. Um, so Alpha Sharks is picking up that the rank or this actual NFT that's being bought up, number 3226 is actually listed for the first time and that's what this green is actually indicating here um, <clears throat> then you'll have a red listing as well uh, which will indicate the um, this person has actually undercut a listing that they had previously posted so in other words they are basically undercutting themselves um, so definitely a solid metric to look at if you see lots of reds that are coming in at this point you can probably see that the floor might be getting undercut at this point um, again utilizing this with kind of the listings graph is and sales is going to help us out tons um, then we're going to have a white uh, right here uh, notice on this right hand side we're going to have a right hand or a white uh, colorway on the left hand side and what that's going to indicate is that there's a listed <clears throat> this listing was actually listed higher um, but there's still a lower listing that's still active so it might be posted on another marketplace or um, there's just another listing that's active that's lower um, so definitely want to look out for uh, there's another one that's somewhat rare uh, to see Let's see if we can actually find one here. It's going to be a yellow uh, bar. I'm actually not seeing one. We found one the last time. Let's see if we can find one over here. Mm. No dice. Mm. Um, yeah, they're somewhat rare uh, to kind of see. So if you happen to see a yellow uh, slide on the left-hand side, what that's going to indicate is that Previously, there was a listing uh, that was taken down and um, they actually had put it up and listed it for higher at that point. So if we start to see lots of yellows that start to stack up, usually you'll start to see that on more like breakout news or like some really high catalyst that's starting to pump a project. Um, you'll start to see lots of yellows coming in because sellers were not ready for, let's say they have their NFT listed already. and some berserk news comes out and the demand starts flying through and they're not they think their nfts uh listed a little too low so seeing lots of uh yellows uh back to back is definitely a bullish signal so definitely a great question um, let's see Hutch, uh, would you buy into a project like Aliens, for example, knowing there's about 7k to be minted, or would you wait for the collection to be minted out uh, to lessen the risk? That uh, comes down to what type of trader you personally are. Um, I'm more of a patient trader. Um, <clears throat> ideally, if I would have saw this, I guess, live, well, I know this is somewhat live, but um, I'd like to get in near these... Uh, these pullback zones because I see this pattern kind of happen over and over and over again uh, where we have this uh, shoot up pullback pullbacks not uh, pulling back far enough under the first low um, ideally that's the type of play I like to utilize um, if we have more supply coming in uh, that's usually not something I like to play personally um, unless it's some type of like reveal but again that's that totally comes down to the type of trader that you are. Um, if you're more aggressive and you're more momentum, then that could definitely be a play. Um, if you're more laid back and conservative, then doing the kind of strat that we talked about earlier, potentially waiting for the supply to mint out. And if you have conviction that a project is actually going to continue the demand, then that's when um, you'd want to be striking at that point. Um, but personally, this area was kind of the uh, dip by zone. Um, and I, I hate buying uh, right into like resistance here, though we could see listings starting to shoot down. Um, that's, yeah, I'm a big volume guy. I like to see the volume start to increase. So I like to see them starting to rise over time and not 
consolidate here. Um, so personally, that would be a no for me. Brave Raj, uh, what kind of volume or other metrics should we be looking at before buying into the first limited or actively minted project, free mint or degen projects in particular? Uh, personally, man, I follow the volume. Um, the volume and the amount of listings that are coming in because those are two things that are whatever is correlated to demand and supply. And however you can link that to demand and supply, and the more directly correlated they are, the better the metric is actually going to be. Um, so again, that's totally preference on what, um, again, what type of trader you are. Um, uh, yeah, James, when a transaction fails from which metric does price come base figure GUI to know which one was recent one? When a transaction fails from metric, does the price come from base fee or GUI to know? That's a great question. Um, I'm almost positive the priority um, gets charged. Um, I don't want to speak too much on that. Um, there are definitely other people in here that can help out with that answer. Uh, How about the yellow bar on the left side? Yellow bar on the left side. Uh, I'm not sure what you're speaking on there. Uh, what's the difference between red green lines from the left side listings and sales side? Um, there's going to be no difference. Um, mm, yeah, no difference on the colorway on the left hand side. There's only going to be one, I guess, main difference that's actually happening here. Um, is that listings are obviously listings that have not been filled, meaning that these are on, or these are up for sale, but not obviously sold. And these are where the transactions actually are uh, on the actual blockchain. Um, and another thing to look at too is, notice we have trades and delistings, and we have pretty much the grayed out uh, background. Um, notice this one here is highlighted in like a yellowish uh, hue. And what that's going to indicate is that this is an actual delisting. Um, so you can also filter that here if you just want to see sales. Um, that should go away. There you go. Um, but if you want to see everything, then you can pop that right back in. Uh, as far as explaining now, yes, nice Nebo taking notes. Uh, Oreos a moment. Is there any plans for colorblind mode? I kind of heavily colorblind on red and green scale and struggle a bit to see everything. Oh my goodness, that is definitely something I'll be passing to the team. Um, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, we're definitely trying to uh, incorporate everybody that's utilizing the platform. So definitely we're passing that to the team. Uh, JGT, how do you, you see delistings? I thought there was the white slide. Yeah, so that's how you pull up the delistings. You can just, uh, you can either just filter them or uh, again, just look out for the ones that are just highlighted. Um, you also have a delistings hourly metric up here as well. So, mm -hmm. Is it possible to see sales that are actually accepting wheat offers? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I, I'm trying to think if I've seen any. Not that I know of. Um, definitely will take that to the team as well. Um, I don't know if anybody has any other uh, views on that. Um, but yeah, definitely a, something to take a look at for sure. PZ, is it possible to change the time intervals on sales and delistings tab? 
No, um, that's a great question, PZ, because um, on the view setup that we're kind of looking at right now, the trades and delistings portion, um, notice this only has 1,350 transactions. Um, this is fine. Um, the sales chart is also going to show this amount of transactions up until about 3,000 transactions. Um, once you start pushing over 3,000 transactions, um, the even if you're on, let's say the project has been out 60 days, um, or yeah, let's say it's been out 60 days, but it has more than 3,000 transactions, you will not see all the data that is actually flowing through. You'll only see the last um, 3,000 transactions that have, had, that have actually flowed through. Um, so that's a great question because um, yeah, as of yet, there are not possibilities to change the time intervals, but I believe we will be getting a view uh, for all time data, which uh, again, is not gonna be inside this view, um, might be some, type of separate um, view, but that's a great question. Robert Johnny, next to the ETH price on top, uh, what is that sting of numbers? Shoot, somebody asked that uh, the last time. I totally forgot to get that number. Um, I believe it's the block that we're trading on. Um, I could be wrong on that. Um, I will get that uh, metric to you guys this uh, actually tomorrow's for tomorrow's uh, live AMA great question James uh, if you want to snipe on reveal how are you choosing your settings also since everybody chooses round numbers like 500 500 it makes sense to do like 503 uh, it I mean that totally depends on again the project itself and trying to see how what people are paying like what are people actually putting for gas and priority and you have to ask yourself is that worth it to you because if you actually get filled at that gas price or that priority fee um can you take on that risk and that's a personal question for each person's account size i mean that's definitely um yeah, one thing to look out for if you're going to be use it, using that strategy, um, using off reveals. Nebo, for the bottom three, bottom three charts, specifically the right two, what does the threshold indicate and how do we use it? Also, is there a way to expand the chart view for data further back? For example, the total listing chart where it would be useful to look back a few days to see listen trend um yes we're actually working on the well that total listing portion um and working on time frames that we can accumulate to kind of correlate all the time frames or all the charts with um but yeah as of right now there's no time interval that we can change but we are trying to work on something where we again can get all time data for all the stats we're kind of looking at um, the first part of your question, uh, what does the threshold indicate and how do we use it? So let's say we're looking at this project here and let's say we wanted, this is going to give us total listings correct of the actual project that's happening. Um, let's say there's listings at like 10 ETH, 5 ETH, and we don't really care about those listings, right? I mean technically until we can kind of get there. Let's say our price target for us personally is 0.25. Um, so what we do is highlight that, or you can just type it in and notice our listings actually change. Um, and our chart actually changes here because what that's gonna show now is <clears throat> it's giving us the threshold of listings that are popping up up until this price point. And everything after this price point is not being calculated because again, that's the threshold that we're putting. Um, so again, if you're utilizing this in a momentum play, this is definitely one of the uh, metrics to, to kind of utilize because, again, if you have listings that are at absurd, um, not absurd numbers, but like ra like super rares that are uh, put up for like 5 ETH, 10 ETH, um, again, you don't really, if you don't have one, then you don't really care for it at that point. Um, so utilizing this metric to see... Uh, the true amount of listings until a point is uh, pretty else helpful. 
Great question. Easy. Thank you. I was thinking more for short term analysis, like sales in the last 15 minutes. And I assume that's what the sales charts are for, though. Yes, 100%. Yes, it is the block. Cool. Flat. What does the metadata fetch mean and rank rarity mean in the top right? Uh, metadata fetch. Um, so it's saying that we have pulled all the metadata from uh, the project itself. Um, again, th we're pulling the, I guess, the metadata from the project, but again, since it's unrevealed, uh, notice rank rarity is going to show us that there's no variety in rank. It's zero. Notice they're all one. They're all rank one. And if we change this to ranks, they're all going to be the same rank. They're all rank one, rank one, rank one, rank one, rank, rank one, because at this point we know that they're unrevealed and that's what this is actually showing. When rank variety actually pops up, it's going to show us how many different variations of rank there actually is. So that's going to give us how much is actually revealed at that point. Great question. Uh, is it possible to see the uh, sale of each NFT? Is it possible to see the last sale of each NFT? Uh, it's going to be here. Um, you can click onto it and uh, view the OpenSea and go into the uh, Etherscan. Uh, why is data capped at 3,000 transactions? Um, if it's it's capped at 3,000 because of data feed. Um, in order, I mean, if we're capping, we have to put a cap on it at 3,000 transactions because if we're calculating three more than 3,000 or all-time data on every single project that comes through, that'd get ridiculous. Um, so for speed purposes, that's totally limited to 3,000 transactions. But again, we're trying to work on something where we do get all-time data for, um, again, projects that are either super hyped or actually have some backing um, behind it. NFT, like two days ago, I saw blue chip icon buy a sell. What does that mean? Uh, does that mean blue chip holder bought? Oh, that's a great bring up. Um, let's see if we can see a blue chip icon. Perfect. Um, so I believe this is what you're talking about, NFT. Uh, this little blue chip icon here. Um, so we have two of them that are actually going to pop up. If you have one little blue chip icon, what that's going to indicate is that this project actually has 10%, at least 10% uh, NBCP. And again, that's a metric that we were talking about earlier. Um, again, if we start seeing it from that 7 to 10% range, this this is telling us that it has potential to actually make a move because there's two things that well, a few things that kind of add up we can have a broader bigger audience to kind of uh shift eyes and potential demand onto this project itself plus we have people that are actual blue chip holders uh, that are actually holding this nft as well so the higher the blue chip percentage usually the higher amount of owners of blue chips so Again, that's bringing in that potential demand at that point. Um, again, that's going to be for the one blue chip. If you see two, I don't know if we can see one that has two. Uh, let's go to 24 hour volume. I'm going to do one here. No, right here. Um, so, right here with uh, Webiverse Genesis. Uh, notice it has two, and this is actually indicating that any project with two blue chips is going to have. Uh, 20 at least 20 percent uh nbcp at this point and again we're saying above seven to fifteen percent that's pretty solid um to start getting into uh, higher price targets that uh, we're looking at so definitely a nice little metric that we got here
cool. All right, that was all my questions so far. Uh, I do have somebody in the queue. Uh, Coco Bean, I have you in the queue. Um, did you want to come into the live stream? Going to no no dice <laughs> okay all right um solid question so far um going to see if there's any more questions here see flat is typing so let's give him that time uh, just watch on there it's clear for some reason okay cool it's actually good to know coco bean thank you Of uh, solid questions, this anime, um, and Jesus, so many people in the Discord. Um, again, I'm gonna do a little nice breakdown. Uh, welcome to all the people in the Discord, and welcome to all the people on Twitter and Twitch who are watching. Um, this is an Owl Sharks kind of breakdown on our training page and uh, minting page, and just going over uh, kind of how to utilize the um platform itself and again just breaking down indicators and trying to see how to utilize that uh for potential strategies um while using alpha sharks um so again welcome everybody uh lots of new faces um yeah excited to have you guys here uh again these sessions do last about an hour or so um so <clears throat> we will be uh respecting your guys' time. Uh, we do have some more questions. Um, JSTAR, is there Wells bot indicator? Um, to, as of right now, not, I mean, not a whale bot indicator. Um, what you can check are a few different metrics. Uh, if you go into the mint page itself and you actually go <clears throat> into uh, let's say something like eight liens. Um, you can pop up this little side view and it actually gives you a nice breakdown on the notable holders who are actually in the project and actually tells you uh, again who's holding it, how many wallets are holding it, um, and gives us nice little uh, breakdowns of cell walls and momentum as, as well. Um, so this is a I think one of the main things that you're kind of looking for here. James, what advice would you give to someone that wants to start sniping on reveal? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, one of my, one of my main advice tips would be to get a node. Um, if you're looking to snipe on reveal, you definitely, you're depending on faster transactions to flow through and um, utilizing sharks and a uh, faster node is definitely uh, a killer combo when uh, you're trying to reveal uh, snipe. So I guess that's one of my main uh, tips would be to get a node like zap node or um, I don't know there's tons of them that are out there but um, yeah definitely jump onto a node. Flat. The old UI was providing ether scan links for pending transaction. Can you guys, can you guys bring back that feature? Uh, definitely will pass that to the team. Uh, I know that we're having uh, some issues with like fake links and stuff. So again, uh, the security here for you guys is the first thing uh, on our minds. So if we find that we can get that to fully work, then 100%. But yeah, we'll definitely ask about that. Link shark node, right? That would be nice. PZ, Kumaverse point one floor price gets access to trippy node. Yeah, trippy node's a good one. Um, I think 
Funkles. Uh, for some reason, I think Funkles gets access to Zapnode. Um, I think I have one and figured that out like a week ago or something. So I don't know what their floor price is. Let's see. Point oh one. Look at that. I think for point oh one, you can get a you can get a node. So if you're trying to do that, I would double check this um, before anybody confirms and actually buys this up. Um, I believe that's the case. Um, Got it. Yeah. Did someone catch with James? Did someone catch with which node he said? But. He said zap node. Yeah, zap node or uh, trippy node's a good one as well. Um, there are a few. Uh, I'll link them after the AMA chat that I actually have installed. Um, but yeah, great question so far. Um, let's see if we have anything live that's kind of actually happening. Techie Club, what's this? <laughs> Alright, this is a good example as well. Um, not my kind of style of play, but fits the kind of parameters that we're talking about, right? Um, kind of the same setup. Well, not the same setup, but had the same kind of trend line that we're testing, uh, kind of like in the last example. But notice what I was talking about on the last example. Remember when I was saying that I'm not a fan of buying into kind of the topping zone. Um, but the one thing that we did need to actually push at this point was going to be the volume. And notice we we actually got the volume pushing in at the right at the top of this trend line here. Um, that was a very key uh, point for us at that point because, again, we didn't break the last low that we initially had here. Um, might seem like we did or we got very close to it, but um, we didn't and we actually ended up breaking here. But look at what's actually helping us out tons. Look at the time frame of our listings from 11 to pretty much now, from 11 Again, look at this time frame from 11. Look at what's happening with our volume increasing. And look at what's happening with our price at this point. We're breaking out of that trend and we're actually getting the reversal because of a few things. We're actually getting, again, fit, higher than 50% owner supply ratio. We're getting active listings under 10% of the actual supply, which is, again, thin walls to get through. We have lots of green that's popping up. Not too many blue and purple uh, token holders at this point. Our volume staying consistent, and ideally our listings are going down over time. Um, now we're starting to see a potential reversal of listings, meaning maybe we're starting to get this back up um and notice our sales are starting to go down at this point um it's kind of the same concept again the more you guys kind of do this uh over and over and over again it's kind of you guys will start to see patterns that start to repeat um over and over and over again and again i have no idea what's going on with this uh project fundamentally but uh, i do know what's going on with it technically and when you get to form both of those uh, ideas and concepts together, that's when I believe uh, trading, when people can become very elite traders, because if you can understand the sediment that's kind of happening with the market and the project itself, and you also know where the technical setup is, um, and who's kind of in demand and where you are in the actual cycle, um, that's a very deadly combo uh, to utilize. And luckily Sharks helps us out with that. We just kind of got to uh, figure out how to read the uh, data that's actually flowing through. So. Uh, Alan, Funko gives access to Zach Node, cheap entry. Just got one yesterday and the node is nice. Yep, there you go. Cool. Got it. 
uh, yeah, 0.01 entry is not bad for a node uh, if you're looking, and Zapno is a pretty decent one from what I've seen or used. Uh, Brave Raj, which metric should I look at for quitting my normie job and DJing full time? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, that would be uh, Bitcoin. You definitely want to be checking Bitcoin. I'm hoping Bitcoin goes to the 100 ETH price target everybody is wanting. <laughs> that's a great question. Easy. Thanks for helping us out. It means a lot. Yeah, no worries, man. That's why I'm here. I'm going to pretend to trade a few projects and see if I can call the highs and lows. Yeah, that's the best way to do it, man. Um, screenshots, screenshots and screen records if you have the space on um, your laptop or phone to do it. Um, definitely uh, one thing that a lot of people don't utilize is tracking your trades and more tracking like why it actually went wrong and reviewing it or like just having a plan in general because trading just fully based on emotion saying oh my god uh, this popped up on icy tools and everybody's buying it uh, I want to be it too that's not really a plan um, you can't really learn anything off that right you're just trading off emotion um, when you have a set plan in place you have something to kind of fall back on um, and I think that's where the real learning process kind of goes on where if you have a plan and you stick to it, um, there's a reason you had and made that plan in the first place. And refining that process over and over and over again um, just makes that plan a lot stronger uh, as long as you're in the game. Um, so, yeah. Um, cool. I do see Jap is in the queue. Uh, alright. Going to bring you up, Jap. Uh, your mic is on. And the, uh, the wheel is on. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Let me flash this hey. real quick. Um, okay. Sorry for the background noise. If, if you hear any. You're good. Um, so for those who are watching, uh, that's kind of going to be it for the uh, stream. We do have many people who are in the Discord right now. Um, if you have stood here throughout the duration and have participated, you'll be entered into the wheel that uh, Jap will be showing right now on the screen. Awesome. So I just added all of you. There's 44 entries and good luck to everyone. All right. Good luck. Let's see whose lucky day it is. J5 star for the win. Congratulations. Thank you for the, for the amazing session again. Crazy. No, you're good, man. Appreciate you uh, stopping by even on your vacation, man. Um, do your thing. I appreciate yeah, you. No worries. Down. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming as well. And tomorrow there's another session, like sorry as you just mentioned. So uh, it would be amazing if you guys can come as well. Ask any questions. Yes, sir. Appreciate Jab. Give some hearts for Jap in the chats. Just clap it up for J Five Star. Um, awesome love the help chap i appreciate Jap so much without him a lot of this cannot go down um and also appreciate every single one of you guys that show up to these sessions because also with you guys um none of this can go down so um again pretty awesome to see people just showing up uh inside discord and potentially winning 100 bucks um so congrats, J5 Star. Hopefully that turns into some bigger DGEN plays and you can utilize some of the um, stats and kind of strategies that we're talking about in the session. And uh, yeah, maybe that can help you out some. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for today's session. We do have another session going on tomorrow at 7.15 p.m. Eastern 
um, if you guys can make that. Um, it is also linked inside media announcements if uh, you guys wanted to uh, sign up for the interest uh, or put in little interested uh, signal on that. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for this uh, session. And appreciate you guys coming down. Um, but yeah, I will catch you guys tomorrow if you guys come down. If not, I'll catch you guys next week. Um, but yeah, you guys have a good one and may your guys' bags be booked.